Hello. Um, but today I'm going to talk about a, a quiet place. Um, s stars John Krasinski and Emily Blunt. Uh, Krasinski co-wrote the movie, he produced the film, he's an executive producer, I believe, and directed the film. And, um, I didn't cover it when it first came out in the theaters because, well, um, I didn't have a chance at all to see it on the big screen. Um, unfortunately, it came out during a time where, uh, it was just before Avengers, and I had to choose what film would I want to see, Quiet Place or Avengers, and I obviously went and saw Avengers because, well, I talked about that on this channel. Um, also, earlier, in, uh, even I think even before or around the time that film came out, or A Quiet Place came out, I also saw another movie, so that kind of was like limiting to when I would see in theaters for the month usually be like maybe like two movies at most I know in uh, in May a lot of things I didn't see really a lot of movies uh, that came out that month um, it was my birthday uh, during May and also a lot of personal stuff happened so uh, that also kind of limited my viewing of seeing films on the big screen. But anyway, um, I will say, I, well, I don't regret seeing Avengers at all. You know, I had seen all the Avenger films in on the big screen, so that was kind of like a tradition. He was kind of didn't want to break that, but uh, this is a very good film. I kind of do regret not seeing this on the big screen. Uh, I will say, uh, it was fairly short. It was 90 minutes. Um, I was a bit surprised. Uh, usually something like this you'd think would be uh, around two hours. Or at least ten more minutes. Or ten minutes longer. And I have to say it's very well directed, very well acted. Um, there's not a lot of di dialogue. Uh, I'm sure if you've seen the trailers or even seen the film you know there are these monsters or aliens from you know, outer space. That if you make a sound or make a lot of noise, uh, accidental or intentional, uh, these um, alien creatures are going to come and attack and kill you. Uh, and in the film, you know, you, you see uh, from the trailers, you see the family. One, two, three, four. Four of them. Uh, though there was a fifth one. There's a younger son. Um, the. But yeah, he's uh, unfortunately, uh, you know, he gets killed, and uh, I, th I would say that's a spoiler. But I think people kind of grasp that from the get go because, well. From all the trailers and all the commercials and promotions, it's always these four family members. And you see, even in the trailer, uh, Krasinski's running towards the boy, and then they just cut before anything happens. It's... Uh, even though you kind of know what's going to happen, I would say it, it, it's still a bit shocking to see, you know, uh, a child that young in a film like this getting killed, getting killed, um, because kids usually are never killed off in horror films, um, unless, I guess, like, if the main protagonists, like, they're all, like, kids or something, then maybe, uh, kids would get killed off or something, otherwise, if you have a child or something in a horror film, you're really not going to die. Um, granted, that could be... Uh, honestly, that's, I'm sure, to some as a spoiler, but 
honestly, um, given the fact that you see that uh, brief glimpses in the trailer, even though you don't see the outcome, and then you see the rest of the trailer, and it's about the family trying to keep quiet, trying not to not to make a sound, hiding and all that from these creatures. I don't really think uh, it's super a real big spoiler exactly. Um, now I'm not going to reveal the end because I'm sure there's many people who have not seen this film. Um, maybe if this film has been out for like a year but it, this it just came out on Blu-ray DVD a couple of weeks ago, so and this came out in April. Uh, it was in theaters for a good while, and but I know there are many people who haven't seen it, so I'm not going to really say anything else spoiler related to that. Um, again, the acting is good. Uh, Krasinski and Blunt, you know, they're married in real life, and uh, they played a married couple in here. Their acting is really good. Um, again, the dialogue, you know, they mostly use sign language. And, um, not just because, um, uh, to be quiet, but they do it because, well, uh, the daughter they have in the film, uh, she's deaf. So, and you see throughout the film, uh, Krasinski's trying to, you know, do something to help her here, like building something to try and, you know, help out, uh, giving her a device of sorts so she can hear things. Um, but, uh, but yeah, uh, it's, it's quite, uh, it's quite a tense film. Even though it's PG-13, um, I know many people aren't fond of horror films that are rated PG-13. I have to say, I admit I'm one of those people. But the, the tension, the tense factor in this is very good. It's very well done. Um, you know, uh, no real complaints here in that department. Um, um, the one thing is, uh, I know many. There were many people who had a problem with uh, a certain aspect, which is uh, Emily Blunt's, Blunt's character is pregnant. Now, and the reason I... There's a reason I kind of spoiled the beginning of the film, which I'm not sure is a complete spoiler, again, because of the trailers and all, but the reason is because... And Krasinski even said this. I mean, aside from, you know, cu uh, building more tensions in this world where you can't speak or you can't say a word, or if you do, you have to be really quiet or you have to learn or know sign language to communicate. Um, you know, it's to build tension. Uh, the... Uh, one reason that John Krasinski said was, in a situation like this, when they lose, when uh, parents lose a child, I mean, I guess there could be multiple scenarios of what could happen, but there seems to be mainly two. One is they drift apart, split up, whatever, just that's it. And in this world, while they have kids, you know. Um, like what's gonna happen with them? Are is are the two of them gonna stay with her? Are the two of them gonna stay with him? Or are they each gonna take one while she like stays at the house they're staying at, and he, he and son or he and the daughter go somewhere else or what? Obviously they stay together. And so like another scenario is uh, trying to cope. With the loss of a child, that would kind of console each other and be very intimate. And well, 
and it happens is it, she became pregnant. You know, they instead of drifting away you know, and all that, um, maybe because there's a, a big gap between um, the very beginning of the film. The movie is uh, begins in is like 2020. So that's when the film takes place. There's the creatures can't see, so that's why they, you know, rely on sounds. Um, and, uh, but I know a lot of people seem to ha have a big problem with that aspect with the baby and all. Like, why would you have a baby in this? world where sounds kill you and all. Well, you know, again, it could have either drifted apart, which I mean, it might not have been the best situation or scenario uh, in this kind of world, but I really like this. Yeah, it's a very good film. Um, Contender, I think, for at least could be possibly one of the best films of the year. Um, I'm not sure if it will go down as the best film of the year. You know, still have to see other films that are yet to come out or have been out, but you know, might not see some on the big screen. Um, but yeah, I enjoyed it. I kind of also, yeah, that's just one thing I kind of wanted to address, the whole baby thing, because people had, again, problems with it, but what do you, well, think of it like that when, you know, dealing with the loss of a child, it's like, granted, there are multiple ways what could happen afterwards, you know, but there's two big ones, you either drift apart from your significant other, or in this case, spouse, or you console each other, and get fairly intimate. Granted, I am sure that wasn't a planned pregnancy, but it happened. Um, but yeah, the direction is very good. The acting is great. Well, direction is great also. I, should, I shouldn't just say good. The writing is too. And, and there is parts of the film where they do talk. Um, this is produced by Michael Bay. So, um, so there isn't a lot of explosions, but granted, he's just the producer, but still, just heads up. Uh, the, guys, the guys who made or helped produce the, the reboot of Friday the 13th produced this. Brian Woods, Scott Beck, and John Krasinski, they all wrote this film. They also wrote the story and the screenplay, but... I think the writing is also very well done. Um, like the scenarios are well written about what happens. Uh, it's a very visual film, but there's also is dialogue you know, with sign language. I don't know what I'm doing, so don't take offense or anything. Uh, I mean anything bad, but you know there's sign language and there is actual speaking. There is a few scenes where they talk uh, where, and you hear them. So, yeah. And the, again, the daughter is actually deaf. Like the actress who plays the daughter, she's really deaf. Um, yeah, they don't list the children here. Who played the son and daughter? Um, just John Krasinski and Emily Blunt who play, uh, play Lee and Evelyn. But uh, yeah, it's a good film about survival in a situation that really sucks. And uh, so it's a really good movie. If you haven't seen it, uh, I'd recommend it. If you have seen it, 
you either like it or you don't. I know for some of these movies I don't really talk in depth about, but I know this film came out this year and made a lot of money, but still there are a good number of people who have not seen the film. And I don't want to spoil anything huge. Um, granted, I know I said somebody in the film dies, but judging from... everything they did to promote it, it's kind of indicates that that character is no longer in the movie. Um, like, they died, so... Yeah. That's really all I have to say. A Quiet Place... A Quiet Place is a good movie. Uh, and, uh, really, yeah, that's all I have to say. I guess it's a good time I'm pretty much done because uh, now I'm beginning to not talk. So, hope uh, hope you all have a good day, have a good weekend, and I will see you next time. See ya.